Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Mark Becker here. Um, glad you can join us. Uh, looks like we have people still signing on. Um, we had a couple of technical difficulties, so sorry we're starting a moment or two late. But um, you're going to be in great hands today. Uh, we have a great session. Um, it's all about um, uh, NXT uh, events in Razor's Edge NXT. Um, and again, uh, going on to the next slide, um, my name is uh, Mark Becker. And I'm the founding partner of Cathexis Partners. Um, just a little bit about us. We've been around for a little over 11 years now. We help nonprofit organizations in higher ed um, with their uh, nonprofit technology needs. Um, and we do all that work working remotely from our home offices across the United States. Um, have, have a great group of uh, team members. And the one we're going to be listening to today uh, is Aaron. Um, Aaron, if you want to take it away. Um, and, oh, I forgot to, one, to mention one thing. Any housekeeping, uh, just one little housekeeping thing. Uh, feel free, as you have questions, to ask them in the chat. Um, and we will get to them as we can or at the end of the session. Um, but, Aaron, it's all yours. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Um, as Mark said, I am one of the consultants here with uh, Cathexis Partners, and we're going to be reviewing events in NXT. So I hope you enjoy the session. And like Mark said, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the in the Q and A area, and he'll he'll let me know. And we're off. So. We're going to start with the basics of where to, how to get to events and stuff like that. We're going to look at how to add an event, navigate event records, add a new participant and guest, mark attendance, use some of the filters, export event lists, some best practices, and then we'll talk about documentation. So without further ado, let's head over to our NXT. You should all know how, by this point, to get into NXT. And usually when you come in, this is your screen that you're going to see. We are going to go to events. Everything today is about events. So here you see we have a number of events already in the system. But we're going to start with adding an event. Very, very basic. Click Add Event. What's your event name? You know, what is it going to be called? That type of thing. We're just going to go with practice. Oh, goodness. Practice event. Description. Our description is going to be this is just for demonstration. If it's a sporting event or a gala or um, something like that, you may want to be a little more descriptive as you know, far as you know, we're we're going to have a dinner and a golf event and you know an auction and you know, you can put all kinds of information in here. Select your category. So this one, we're just, we're actually going to go over. You can scroll through and see what choices you have. Or you can type in just, I'm going to go with just meeting and search. Found it. We're good to go. So you don't have to go through and, you know, scroll through if you have a number, large number of different categories. Our start date. This event is eh, going to start on Monday at 5 p.m. And it's also going to end the same day on Monday, but we're, it's not going to end till we'll say 7 p.m. 
and we're going to save. You now see third line down practice event is a meeting starts on the 25th. Capacity, everything zeros at this point. We're going to start working on on how to edit this event overview. So we're going to click back in. We're going to view the record. So we're going to look at the details and we're going to edit details. So the system assigned it an ID number. You can adjust this if you prefer to use words instead of letting the system assign numbers. So you could you could actually call it something you can you can assign it words. Category is still meeting. Capacity. We're gonna say our capacity is oh, 100. From the goal, event goal, this could be goals can be monetary or um, you know a feel, you know, it's a connection thing. For event goals, though, for this portion, we're gonna say five hundred dollars because it's it's a low level thing. So we we've got our capacity, we've got our category. Now you can see we could specify a location, and we will look at that on on a different uh, event. So you can take a a look at that. And then we want to, um, it just helps us with the views. Prices, we have no prices, we have no campaign, we have no fund. We need to know when people register, where's that money going? This is, this is how we tell it. So we're gonna have a basic, the basic registration fee is gonna be $5. Contribution amount is zero. So this is where if you have like a dinner event, you can say, you know, this amount is the actual fee and this amount is the donation. So if your dinner is a hundred dollars, but 50 of it is, is considered a, a donation, this is where you would uh, indicate that. So you'd, put 50 under fee and 50 under contribution. Okay, so we've got our basic, we can add different levels. We could have an advanced and maybe advanced is $10. We can edit our pricing. And this is where you pick your campaign and fund. So for this, we're just going to say There was a couple of questions, if you don't mind me uh, asking them along the way here, Aaron. Absolutely. Um, are the event categories standard, or can you create your own categories? You can create your own. Great. And then um, let's see, is the category an editable table? I think that's the same question. Great. Um, will all this information be submitted in WebView show up in the database view of RE? So everything that goes into NXT, is it also viewable in RE? Yes. In the classic view, yes. Excellent. And uh, another question, can you edit prices later? Is that going to be updated after you've already gone live with it? No, you cannot edit your prices. Your prices stay. Um, you can, as you can see, if you click on the ellipsis, all you can do is delete that price. You cannot edit it or change it. You can add additional ones. So if you wanted a change, you would add a different category, a different price range, and then remove any ones that you did not want. So unfortunately, you cannot edit pricing once it's in. Oh, that's all very helpful. Thank you. Absolutely. Good questions. 
So um, one thing good about this area is right here you see sold. So in a glance, you can see based on what ticket product, you know, what ticket price, how many tickets you've sold for that for that level. So that does help determine, you know, where you're at, your your funds and so forth. Um, as I said, under the if you click on the edit, this is where you decide your fund and campaign. So this is where you tell the system where to apply any money that comes in from from this event. So really important, especially to your to your finance people. They they will appreciate that being handled. We're going to move on to participants. On participants, we want to work with participants. I mean, as you can see, we've got no participants, no one's invited, no one's registered, no one's attended. To add participants, there are, there are several ways of doing this. We can do just like we did with event, you can add. And as you can see, you can add a participant individually or you can add from a saved list. So if you have a list, a constituent list that you wanna to use to add people to this event, you would select add from saved list. You can search for your, for your um, we'll use the gala. Here's the invite list for a gala. We're gonna make their participant level. We're actually, we're gonna leave them for now because they haven't attended or done anything. We are making them invited because this is the invitation list. We're gonna say they were invited November 1st, but they are not registered, okay? We say save. This is how you do a group add. Okay, it's gonna take it. There we go. See in the bottom right hand corner, I've got a green box that tells me 2,977 new participants were added to the event. They're not, as you can see, we're, we don't have anything attended. We don't, they're not registered no fees, no nothing paid. So that's one way. We can also add individually. So you can search for an individual or you can add an individual. Um, let's see. There was a question, can you add individuals and orgs at the same time? If they're all in your list. If they're in your list, then you can add them all at the same time. If you're adding individually, then, you know, obviously your cert, you know, you have this box that you can add as organization or you can find an individual and add them. Yeah, oh, makes sense. I already, added. I already added Jack, so. But so that's that's how that works. You can as long as they're already in your list. Thanks. Okay. Um, as we talked about, you already, you can add an organization in the here. Um, their invitation status, their registration status. Um, participant level is, is how your organization is describing participants involvement, whether it's sponsor or local supporter or child participant, because maybe you have an event where Kids are a different price, so you have child participants, you know, what have you. So that's that's participation level. Um, I am actually going to go back in and pull a different group, a different event. While you're doing that, I have a couple more questions, if that's okay. Absolutely. Um, so, um, Meg asked, uh, can you set inventory or a limit um, for each price level? In other words, 20, 20 at a, a lower price level and then 30 at a, at a, a higher price level. 
unfortunately, not at this time. Um, so I've switched over to our gala event. And as you can see under details, you can see here's where you set your capacity. And so you can only set the capacity for the entire event, not for the different levels. Well, I think Patricia was asking a kind of variation of the same question. Our fundraiser gala has uh, ticket sales increased closer to the event. How do we list that? So it's basically setting the one ticket price initially and then the higher price later on and deleting the first price or is that right? Correct. So, and, and then where you're publishing, that's a whole, whole different series for as far as, um, you know, your registration forms and so forth. Because what you want to do is on your registration form, you want to make sure that you're taking down and, and having it update to the new pricing based on dates. Makes sense. So, Makes so that's a whole different whole different issue. So you could put all your pricing in here on this, but on your on your registration form is where you would actually activate which ones for which dates. So and I just wanted to bring up the gala because you know on this you can see I have where you can buy a table or do individual. Um, it gives the location with a map, which you can utilize. So, you know, there's a lot you can do with these if you depend on how you choose to deal with it. Um, I'm gonna go back into participants. We're gonna work with participants. So once we have our participants in, they may be bringing guests. They, they may have, you know, different people they want to bring and so forth. And I just want to talk a minute about guests. Guests are defined as those who accompany participants to events. And there are four types of guests. There is constituent. A constituent guest is somebody that you're going to collect and track the details about the guest then they need to be a constituent. A named guest is, if you're only gonna collect and track basic information, like maybe their name and, and gender or name and date of birth, or you know, very minimal information, they should just be a named guest. An unknown guest is you have no information other than they're coming with an event participant. So they stay unknown guest. And then a spouse. A spouse is the guest of their spouse who registered and is the participant. So um, real easy. Um, unknown guests are the only ones who don't get a constituent record. Okay. So just want to go over that real quick. And we're going to go to our favorite blackboard person, Mr. Robert Hernandez. Anybody who's done any training with blackboard knows Mr. Hernandez. And Mr. Hernandez, we're going to add, click on the ellipsis. And here you can see our choices. We can edit his, his registration. We can mark him as attended. We can add a guest, we can add fees or payments, or we can delete him from the, from the event. We want to add a guest. As you can see from adding a guest for Mr. Hernandez, we can search for somebody from our database. We can, if we add somebody and we can't find them, if we click over here on the plus, we can, we can add them to our system. We can make them an unknown guest, which is we don't need a record. And for the guest, we're, we've got all our participation levels. They're not invited, but they will be registered once they're paid for. 
And it shows here his wife. He has a spouse, her, Patricia Hernandez. We are going to select Patricia. We're going to get her registered. And we'll just say she got registered today. And we're going to save this. And if we scroll over, it's going to show that he's the host of Patricia Hernandez and of Patricia Ermos. If you want to know more information about these people, you can click on their name and it will tell you. Robert Hernandez is the host. There were no registration fees or payments found on this person, so they still need to be paid. We can go over to Patricia. We still have where we can edit. So just other information for, you know, getting in and working with these people. So let's go back to Robert. Really? Sorry, forgot the period. So for all these guests, adding them is the same. It doesn't matter um, how you do it. Um, we've done the spouse. We've done, you know, how that's added. Let's see how we do another. Before you move on, do you mind if I ask you some questions? A, a few more have trickled in. Sure. Um, when people are added, do they receive a notification? Um, it depends on how you set it up. Usually not, but if because we don't have enough information usually, it depends on what information you have. Like for Patricia, she would probably get a notification because we have her email, we have her information. Um, if it's a named guest or an unknown guest, we probably would not, they would not get notified because we don't have that information. That makes sense. And can, let's see, can you do seating in the NXT event module? There, there is that opportunity. Um, we can look at that in a little bit. Um, I don't, maybe we can't, I'll have to double check. It is something that's coming. I don't know if we actually have that capability on ours yet. Um, with Blackboard, they will have features. So we'll take a look and see. I will make a note and to come to that. Great. Another question kind of related to the list is, does the list have to be in NXT or can you import from Excel? Um, that's a good question. I have not tried it from Excel, but I would assume that you would be able to bring it in. Hmm. Let's give it a quick try. See, it has to be a saved list. So no, it has to be. Yeah. It does have to be within there. So to get your group, it has to be a query from, from RE? Yeah, so if you, to get your group, you can do create a constituent list. I wasn't gonna go into this because to me, this is a whole different area. So it's, you know, you gotta create your list. Got so it. you have to exclude and all your filters and everything else. Thank you. Absolutely. So go back in. And you'll get really used to, to navigating through all this 
if you're going to if you're going to be working with events at all. So add guest, we talked about the four different types. We did, we've added his spouse. Now, you know, since his spouse has been added, she's no longer showing as a spouse here because she's already in the event. If we wanted an unknown guest, we would check the box, change registration status, depend on your, depending on your policy. Some people do not consider somebody registered until they've actually paid their fees. So this is completely up to you and your policy. And, and you know, some people don't do a participation level either until fees are paid. So like, again, that is kind of organization specific. But if we were to do an unknown guest, we would save this and we would be done. For a named guest, so we don't have a record of them yet, we would hit the plus sign, add a guest. Do we wanna add a new constituent or do we wanna add a named guest? If we do named guest, it's asking you for the very basic information, title, first name, last name. As you can see, the only thing that's actually required is last name. Everything else is, is up to you and what you require from your organization. And it asks for address C salutation. So very, very basic information, as you can see. If we go back and we do new constituent, it's gonna be very similar but it's actually going to as you ask a few more. So still only last name required based on your organization, but you can see there's a lot more things it's going to ask you to enter address, phone number, email. They have an online present, if you're, what their constituent code is going to be. And then again, addressee salutation. So Lots, lots of ways to get people into the system. So, you know, even if somebody shows up at the door, you could add them as a new constituent as you're entering them. So always helpful. And can you convert a named guest to a constituent? I think I missed that part. Oh, a named guest does become a constituent, but they're, they're just not as like a full record. They're more of a, of a minor record. So it's, gotcha. it's a little different. It's a little different of a record, but you still have it. Do they need to be converted later or can they can still be, you know, kind of used for connecting with yes. later on engaging with them? Yes, absolutely. The problem is, is as you can see, you don't have, you know, much information though. So unless you get, if you're going to get their email, because all at this point, all you're getting is like name and date of birth or whatever, you really don't have any way to connect with these people. You don't have an email. You don't have an address. You don't have a phone number. So these people are just, they're named. They can have a name tag and all that, but they're really, they're not people you're going to be doing more with. They're, they're a minor record. So they're more like a relationship on, on the record type of thing. Does that make sense? Yep, totally does. Um, and uh, someone, uh, Robin with uh, Blackbot just um, piped up and said, uh, so uh, table seating is on the 2020 roadmap um, as is importing Excel into a list. So. Look for that in the coming year. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Robin. I, I thought I'd seen that as something up and coming. And at the end, we'll look at where where up and coming stuff is and what to look at. So, so all this is for, you know, their name. It's so you can use it for name tags, place cards, things like that. So they, that they actually have a name.
we've talked about unknown guests. Um, and we've looked at how they look on the record. Let's go back out. So, you know, if let's add an unknown guest so you can see what that looks like also. So instead of where the name is, see Robert Hernandez, and he's the host for a couple people, we now have guest of Robert Hernandez. That's, that's how that person will show for an unknown guest. Okay. We all. Good. Yeah. Um, can you take a couple questions? Sure. Um, so can you add other filters, uh, like an email to the name guests? No, um, as you saw, it's, it's the only time you can add email is if they're going to be a constituent. So it really depends on which type of person you're, if you're adding somebody new to your system, Name guess is just for name tags, place cards, whatever for their name. If you want to be able to add emails and stuff, then you're going to add them as a new constituent because that is the only place you have where you can add that that amount of detail. Because now Got you it. can go in and add their phone number, add their email. Now you have ways of being able to, you know, communicate with them and connect with them after the event is over. Got it. There was another question. Now, why are they considered not invited? Is it because he counts only as invited? Um, why they are not considered invited? Is it because, yeah, um, wondering if that throws counts off when filtering under registration status? Well, okay, again, that could be personal preference of the organization. Because technically, Robert Hernandez's guests did not receive a personal inv invitation from the organization. So technically, they are they were not invited. They are he is bringing them as his guest. Um, if if your organization uses invited and not invited in a different way, you do what works for you to keep your organization standardized. The biggest thing is, is have your policy, have your procedure and follow it. Use the standard, follow it. Um, you know, if, if you use invitation status differently, then absolutely stick with it. That totally makes sense. I look at that um, as a novice, as an outsider in this in this piece of things, and I go, "Wow!" If I saw a list and I was shown as not invited, but I'm I'm there, I'd be feeling pretty unwelcome. But that totally makes sense from, you know, were they engaged directly or and invited directly, or are they a, a, a guest of a someone that was invited? Makes sense. Well, because then after the event is over, if they're not invited you can work on if you if you added them as a constituent and they were not invited that gives you a lot of leeway for for moving forward and engaging them further because they were not an they were not invited but they were there anyway as a guest so it, it is completely like i said an organization based thing um how you choose to use it is is your choice but that's that's basically what invitation status has always meant is were they invited? Did they receive an invitation? Yes or no? So got it. But absolutely oh, and, is what works. And just going just going back, thank you for that clarification. It's more of a housekeeping or tracking thing. It makes sense. Um, a flag. Um, in order in order to convert a name guest to a constituent, just to go back to that again, uh, does the information of the guest need to be re-entered uh, into a constituent record, or is it converted? No, you would you would need to convert because if you're going to make them go from if we click on the plus. If I'm if I'm just adding this person as a guest and they're just a named guest, 
that's all they are. You, you know, if you wanted to make them a constituent, then we would need to go back and add them as a, we would need to cancel out of this and add them as a new constituent. They're basically additional fields in that other constituents record versus a, a constituent record of their own at that point, it sounds like they're not a primary record. Right, this is, this is, they are a named guest, that is all they are. It's for name tags, it's for name place cards at the event, that type of thing. That is all that named individual, named guest is for. If you want to engage with them further beyond the event, you need to convert them into a constituent and start communicating with them directly. Correct. I like it. Good to know. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So move, we're going to move on to um, marking attendance. This is, they've made this super, super easy. Um, there are several ways to do this. Um, when you mark attendance, you can do it individually one at a time. You can do it by a party or a group, or you can do it in mass. Um, let's, we'll do individual first. Easy. We found Robert Hernandez. We're marking him attended. We want to. We want to do the whole party. This is where we do individual or party. So Robert Hernandez is marked. He's good. We select all. We've now done his entire party. Simple. Done. Attended. Checked. We go back to the event as a whole you could actually select all. You select all and see down here at the bottom, they've got marked attended, marked not attended, update the registration status, update the invitation status. We're just gonna mark attended. Yeah. Marking 2,900 people attended, I guess, is going to take <laughs> longer than I, than I expected it to. <laughs> yeah, while it's doing that, I have another couple of versions of the same question. Can custom fields be added for guests, um, like dietary preferences or anything else? That's, that's in a different area. Um, I don't... We'll take a look at that. I know I, that's in a different area. Yeah, fair enough. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So when you work with a list of participants within an event, you can use filters. And the filters icon is looks like a funnel. I always call it a funnel, not a filter. So you can look. These are your options. You can go by registration status, invitation status, participation level, attendance status, constituency, email status. These are all choices you have for, for your, your filters. So if you're looking for somebody, you wanna see everybody who's registered, you could apply the filters. And we went from 2,900 and something down to 13. So this is how you can, and then you could export those 13. And see down the bottom right hand corner, I had a blue box that said it was exporting and then it went to green and said export completed. And then you would click on your download file to tell it where you actually wanted to put, save that file to. So whether it's your desktop or a specific folder or what have you. So that would, you know, it lets you narrow down and work with specific groups within your event. Any questions on filters? Uh, not yet, but um, Robin uh, with Blackbot did uh, add, um, adding additional questions is in limited availability now and it will be released 
uh, tonight, apparently, to all customers. So how about that for Timely? Robin, you are hey. awesome to have on this. Thank you. She's on it. Yeah. She is. Good to know. Because I know I saw some of this stuff, and I'm and I'm thinking I saw it at BBCon at, at probably at the thing about what's coming the, up. At the roadmap. Yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if we don't have any more questions on on events, one of the things you can do columns. Have you if you've worked with them before in other areas? It's very very similar. You can choose what you see in your columns and see here's where you know seating you can show the where their participant seat assignment is so you have choices of what you're going to see and what you're not going to see and that tells you exactly what you're going to see right here in this area here so if there's if there's nothing else we're going to switch back over there were a couple other questions, if now's a good time. Sure. Um, is the contribution amount the same as the benefits or fail, uh, fair market value uh, in the database? Um, that, that is exactly what it's doing is it's letting you know, let's go back. It's letting you know what is the fee versus what is what is the donation portion. And there was another, great, thank you. And another question was, how are our fees collected? Fees can be collected um, via somebody mailing in a check, calling in, giving you a credit card, paying cash, uh, registering online at, you know, on the registration page. So fees and all that, if we, let's go back into participation. I'll, I'll do one manual. So say somebody, just mailed in a check or called in a credit card. So let's. Oh man. Oh, am I still on filters, huh? Let's take the filter out. Let's go to Robert. So his guest doesn't show any fees or anything paid. So we're going to click on the ellipsis. We're going to edit. Let's see if I'm doing this right. So, got it. I guess we have to do it from Robert. Add fees and payments. So here's fees, price type, individual, doing one. B is a thousand dollars. Contribution amount is nine fifty. Done with that. We we'll go over to payments. Going to add. So here's where if contribution payment method cash. It already shows the fund and the campaign. So off we go. And see now Robert's fees and paid are all different, have gone up because now he's paid for his, his guest, his unnamed guest. And is it possible to resend confirmations, uh, registration confirmations? I have not attempted to do that. Robin, do you? We'll look into that one. Uh, that's a good one. We had to stump you sooner or later. I think we got through like 50 some questions before you, we stumped you with one. So that's fair. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll look into that one. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And we could find out and probably send out when with the follow-up. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So are we good to move on now? Uh, please. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go to event best practices. I mean, some of these are really just more, you know, common sense. Set your goals. What is the goal of your event? 
Is it, are you trying to raise money? Are you trying to increase the touchy feely, you know, emotions of, of participants? What, what's the goal? Um, set your budget. You know, sometimes setting your budget will help you decide the next few. What type of event are you having? Choose the date of the event. Secure your sponsors, invite supporters, promote the event, and analyze and follow up. I call that, you know, your postmortem. Analyze and follow up on the event. Setting your goals in your budget. Before you can even think about planning an event, you need to know its purpose and what you want it to achieve. Goals can be qualitative or quantitative. So increasing awareness, you know, increasing their, their commitment to your organization or quantitative money. You know, we're trying to raise money. Once you have your goals, you can set your budget and then you need to track your expenses for the event, including employee time spent on the event management. It all, you know, you want to know if what you're doing, you know, is, is actually making money. Yeah, you, you could have brought in, you know, $100,000, but if it costs you 110,000, is it the right event? Are you, are, you know, did you do it right? Choose the type of event you want to have and the date you want to have it. When you set your goals and your budget, you need to determine what type of event best fits your needs and your budget. Because you need to, to know your audience, consider your audience when you're selecting the type of event you're going to hold. Um, consider your need for volunteers and staff. You know, if you're doing an event and it's spring break time for, for people, your volunteers and your staff are going to be, you know, tight on trying to, to be there for the event. So consider their, their needs too when you're selecting. Secure your sponsors. Help cover the cost of your event. Identify prospective sponsors that might be able to help fund the event. Consider the companies that already know and support your company, have ties with your board members, maybe some of your supporters, you know, that are, you know, own their own business or what have you. Some of your vendors may be willing to sponsor. Um, somebody who has philanthropic or business agenda that goes well with your mission of your organization. You know, they can help provide necessary funds. Maybe they can help with promotion, promoting the event. Um, maybe they have employees that regularly, you know, volunteer at your organization. Um, you also need to let them know what's in it for them. So when you're asking them to sponsor, lead with the benefits of sponsorship. You know, what's in it for them? What do they get? And if they do agree to sponsor your event, make sure you establish their role and, and, and do a contract. I mean, this sounds ridiculous, but do a contract and have an ethics clause, you know, to make sure that something doesn't come up that is totally against what you, you believe and what your organization is trying to present. It keeps everybody on the same page, transparent, moving forward in the same direction. Invite your supporters, obvious. I mean, this sounds obvious, but yeah, you need to invite your supporters, but what's your communication plan from start to finish? So you're having this event. How are you going to communicate? How are you going to do invitations, registration forms, acknowledgements, um, follow-up? You know, are you going to do a survey after the event? Are you going to follow up and say, hey, thanks for attending. You know, it was great to see you. You, you need to figure out what your communication plan is. Make sure your online registration form or invitation is clearly branded and reminds people why they care about your, your cause, why it's important. And explain why it's worth their time and investment, their time, their money to, to participate in this and the impact it has. Make it easy for them to, to register and understand the details. You wanna collect key data. 
you know, but you don't want to overwhelm them with too many questions. So you got to find that nice balance. You need to get name, address, email, whatever, but you don't want to kill them with, oh my God, they want my life history. So, and enable people to donate whether they register or not to attend. So even if somebody can't attend because maybe they have a prior commitment or they're on vacation or whatever, you still want to allow them to be able to donate without actually registering. And you want all the information to be shared. So social media, you know, make sure you've got it going. It, it will make a huge impact on your, on your event. Promote the event. So after you've invited, follow up with clear calls to action on a regular basis. Um, as you hear from attendees and donors, respond with personal and timely thanks that acknowledge the impact of the gift. Utilize local media, influential supporters, flyers, posters, your website, social media, get the word out. Um, a lot of um, local radio stations and even TV stations, local news stations will, you know, put a blurb out about your upcoming event if you contact them. And then the postmortem, follow up, you know, just because the event is over, it's not done. You gotta follow up and assess what went well, what didn't go well. Why, why did it go well? You know, why didn't it go so well? What can we do to improve for next time? Ask for feedback from your staff, your volunteers, your sponsors, your attendees. Um, share those results with the team. Follow up on things and, and take them serious to see, you know, is, does this make sense? Should we be, you know, doing this differently? And, and, or is this possible to, to take this, this chance? So, you know, postmortem is huge for improving what you do. And then continuing follow up with everybody, share pictures from the event, social media again. Um, it's, it's huge. Everybody likes to see people having fun, what happened, help them to recognize their impact on your mission, thank them for their participation, listen to their feedback. If, if they're willing to participate and they're willing to give you feedback, maybe they're willing to become a little more involved in your organization. So, and then engaging the new prospects found at the event and inviting them back for other events or to participate in other ways. Report to everyone the impact of the event on your mission, especially tangible goal, goals achieved. After you've done all that, then you celebrate what went right. And, and that celebrating what went right is, is just as important as everything else. People need to, to celebrate the, what went well, what they did good and that, you know, things are good. And then finally, I, I, if you've done a session with me before, you know I'm, I'm big on documentation. Cannot stress how, how important it is to establish your policy and your procedure for everything you do and document it. And that includes events. You, you know, like we talked about with the, you know, invited or not invited. What is your policy? What is your procedure? Document it, follow it. Make sure your documentation is accessible to those in your organization who need it. Make sure it's clear and easily understood and followed and make sure it is complete. Um, and then I'm gonna switch back over here real quick and we're gonna go back. When you log in to NXT, you're usually brought up to this page. Pay attention to this page. Under updates, what's new, what's coming up, what's coming out soon, this is where you will see a lot of the information about. So if you're worried about events, you can scan this and look and see, is there anything on events you know, that's coming up? Is there anything you know, different. This is a great, great thing for if something's changing, you will see it here. 
and no, that's great. Thank you for all of that. And yeah, definitely um, keep these resources in mind. Sorry to interrupt there, Aaron. I know we're getting close to the end of the hour. Those that can stay on, um, feel free. We'll answer any questions that you have while we're still here. Um, if you have to go, we are also going to be recording this and sending it out um, after the fact. Um, and uh, don't forget to check out, uh, we did another uh, uh, 101 webinar recently that's also available on our resources page if you want to go back and look at some of the basics. Um, there was one question though, Aaron. Um, what kind of uh, default uh, reports are available for the event? Let me. Under events itself, um, about the only thing you can do is the export under events itself. If if you go into, um, oh crap, you've got reports and you've got pretty, I think you have to create them yourself. Robin, am I? Uh, she actually had to, to leave, um, okay. <laughs> but she was a great extra resource, but yeah, she had to drop off, but um, my, my that's it might be a good follow up. You have to build your, build your own for, mm. for that. They nope, do not have, I think it's something they're coming out with because I think when I did the roadmap at BabyCon, they were talking about coming out with reports and stuff like that. At this point, they are not, they are not there. No worries. Oh, and I also, we also got an answer back regarding the um, uh, resending a confirmation, um, oh. not currently built into the system. So it would be more of a manual thing to do at this point. Okay. Unfortunate, but they are working on, like I said, they are constantly working on improving the system. So. And there were some questions also about um, like, like a sample registration page. Is that like a quick thing to, to show or is that more of a session topic for another day? That is a session all into That's itself. That's what I thought. I think it, we'll make it, it the top of the list for next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that gets pretty convoluted, and it depends on because there's so many options too. Are you using OLX? Are you using Net Community? Are you using Luminate Online? Are you using some some other you know feature? So I mean, it can get very convoluted very quickly. Yeah, I think we'll cover that at another time. Um, any last thoughts, Aaron? No. Um, I appreciate it, everybody showing up and I hope you were able to learn something. Definitely, I got a lot of good questions. Thank, thank you everybody out there for all your um, interactions and your involvement. Um, even though you're all on mute, you weren't silent and I like that. Um, uh, good to hear all the questions, great questions. Um, and if anything else came in at the last minute, I don't think it did um, other than some thank yous, um, uh, we'll follow up with them. But Aaron, thank you most of all for your time and experience and uh, everybody have a great day. Have a great day.